for a while. You found a job that just kind of, if I remember correctly, just kind of landed in your lap. And it yeah. was, uh, you know, perfect <laughs> for you at the time. So uh, you went back, and then you're now making the transition from being in control of your own schedule to having somebody else kind of tell you where to be and what to do. How did that go uh, for you? That was not pretty. <laughs> yeah, in the fall, well, late summer of 2009, a friend of mine that had been on my staff at AOL uh, called me up and said, hey, yeah, you know, we've been trying to find somebody. The position of my boss is open, and it's been open for six months. I'd love to work for you again. Would you please come in and interview for the position? And I said, oh, I, I don't really want to, but you know, maybe it's a good fit. Maybe I've got something to give to you guys. I'll, I'll come in and talk with you about it. And if it's a good fit, I'll do it for a while. Uh, and it was actually there was actually a, an underlying agreement there that I said, Mike, I'm only going to do this long enough for you to demonstrate that you should have this job. Uh, it was one of the strangest first interviews and the very first interview uh, at the end of the interview, you know, they always get to that position that says that, okay, so do you have any more questions? And I said, yeah, you already have somebody in your staff that's fully qualified for this position. Why haven't you just promoted him? And uh, so, you know, here I'm in my first interview telling them that I'm not the right person. You already have somebody. Now, how, how bold is that? Yeah. Uh, now there were a whole series of reasons for it that I won't go into. Part of it was political, um, part of its other things but um so i agreed to take that job on and it was my primary mission to me in my head was to lay the groundwork that i could step aside and mike could get promoted into the into the role so the the first so i had a i had a very short time frame in mind i had a clock that was ticking and my clock was spinning a lot faster than theirs was <laughs> Uh, I was used to an environment at AOL that was the dot-com boom. Everything is just, it, you think about it, we're going to have it done by next week. Mm -hmm. And this was an organization that says, we're going to think about it, and now we're, we think we're going to do this, and so we're going to talk about it for another six months, and then we might start laying out the groundwork for that, and we might actually start executing on it nine months or a year from now. And I, my brain was hurting. It it was really painful. That and uh, I was expected to wear ties, which I don't. <laughs> yeah, get me started on ties. <laughs> I, I don't mind ties, and certainly if it if it justified. But I was in a building that was you know not really clean, and it was. Why am I wearing a tie? Who who am I supposed to be impressing here? Because I'm not meeting with customers or anybody else outside. The people here know what my position is. They know what my title is. I don't need to wear a tie to to beat them over the head with it. Mm -hmm. That was my perspective. So, anyways, uh, yeah, it was it was brutal. Uh, the timeline was not going according to my plan. Uh, things were taking too long. I was majorly stressed out. Plus, I was still doing all the shows. Uh, at this point, I still had a a pretty full calendar. Uh, not full enough. Uh, admittedly so, but it was pretty darn full, especially for working a full-time job, mm -hmm. and uh, that was that was a brutal time. And plus, we had some we had some family issues going on at the time that I, I won't dig into. But it was a uh, it was a real challenging time altogether. Uh, I lost my my younger brother in the whole process. All of that in that same those first several months of uh, going back to the day job. It was it was tough. Mm -hmm. 